React, Angular, and Vue all allow writing custom components. But what if you want to write a custom web component that works in all three, or even in some web framework that hasn't been invented yet? In this edition of Browser Native, you'll learn how to write web components that will run in any modern web browser. So let me bring in my colleague, Julie Turner. Hey, Bob. Julie. So what do you think? Have you ever used these web components? Do you write I have. components? I have. This is definitely, so um, we've, I, I, I've said in other places that, you know, I do a lot of writing of React uh, solutions mm -hmm. right now because of the platforms that I uh, typically build for, but Web component development is definitely something that I'm interested in as a um, a, a co-maintainer of a library where we're building components that need to be able mm. to be used in multiple uh, frameworks and frameworks that haven't been invented. So web components are definitely top of my mind. Yeah, that's the H2O library. And that's H2O, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. If anyone hasn't checked it out, we'll uh, put the link in the comments. That would be a good idea. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah, but um, there's another example, I, I think, is the graph toolkit. So there's this graph yes. toolkit where you can take a component that logs you in or shows a user or shows your calendar or something, and it's all it all looks exactly like it would look like in, in a Microsoft product. Right. And... Yeah, and you can use it in any of the frameworks because of it being written as a web component. It's just and I think it's super component. powerful. It's absolutely powerful for the right uh, product or the right solution, you know, thing that you're building. It makes a ton of sense when, when you can use them. Cool. So let's take a look at one. And this, yeah, let's... this one is pretty simple. This is really just, um, you know, like all of our samples in Browser Native, we want to just get the, the core concept across and and not complicated any more than needed so hopefully we've done that and and um, this example is a stopwatch component so it's really simple uh, here you can see the html and i'm bringing in a script here um, stopwatch.js and then um, i've got a button on the screen and you'll see why in a minute because it's gonna it's gonna sort of force us to think about the fact that we want to isolate our components and um, so you'll see what that is and then here I am with three stopwatches on the page so stopwatch I can give it a color I can give it some text or even a child some some child HTML and um, and what happens when it works is that you just get these little stopwatches um, again they're dead simple but you can start them and stop them just by clicking and it just, you know, increments every second. So the problem is that this button up here is not supposed to look like those other stopwatches. Right. And, you know, it, so it works, but the styling is wrong. So yep. if we come over to style.css, you'll see that buttons are supposed to have a yellow border oh, okay. and a black background. And yellow text and it, it does not look like that so the reason it doesn't really is because the stopwatch has a style too and the stopwatch says oh a button is supposed to look like this right you know so mm -hmm. so i think we'll deal with that in the next section okay but but let's go ahead and look at the code so the 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 actual stopwatch.js so this is the script that was called from was invoked from the main page from our HTML page and the first thing it's going to do is bring in um, the style sheet its own little um, style sheet and I love this import statement that was such an interesting thing to learn as to be able to assert a type for an import that was yes and it only as far as I know this only works for CSS now I want one for HTML and for some other types Oh yes, um, me too. <laughs> and it, it is interesting because it, it ends up um, taking this style. So this is the note dot slash. We're in a subfolder here, so it's this one. Yeah. And it's bringing in these styles, but it's doing it in. It's bringing them in as some kind of CSS object, right. and not really, uh, um, you know, as just text string. So down here so here's the state of the button by the way it's just these are just in private members so the button element itself that whether it's running the start time and the accumulated time and uh part of the just as an aside the reason that i didn't just say how much time 
um, is because the, this call down here, the set interval is not exactly accurate. Oh, okay. Something else could slow it down. Right, so right, right. Instead of just counting how many times have I have I run, yes, yeah. this little set interval code. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of that, and plus you could start and stop it, which would throw it off. Right. I'm actually doing the math, uh, taking the time of day when it when it started, taking the current time of day, and so you can set the uh, the interval to anything you want, and that's how frequently it will update. Uh, but but that doesn't have anything to do with how long the time has been. That's yeah, smart. Exactly. Yeah, I so like you could that. update okay. it more. You could update it. I think I have it updating every second, but you could do anything you want. So anyway, so here you see document adopted style sheets, and um, obviously this is different from adopting a child or adopting a uh, a use getting users adopted or whatever that's all right about. That's adoption. those other yeah. SharePoint people do that but yeah. um but here what we're doing is we're just taking the style sheet object and we it wants an array so we're putting it into an array all by itself yeah and that's going to apply those styles to the document object so to the whole that's why this button up here ends up getting the wrong style because right. I, you know it the style tag up here or the the um, the link to the style sheet in the HTML got overwritten when when I called that um, right because you said document dot okay yeah. got it in the next section we'll fix that right so at that point we're going to just go in and create um, the DOM element that's actually the button mm -hmm. set the uh, inner text to be the time yep. of zero, format time of zero. Um, so I have a little format time function that just does the formatting. It's not, nothing fancy. Um, then what we're going to do is take this. So recall in the original HTML, I have stopwatch. I can say color equals. All right. Yeah. Right. So this next little piece is going to take this element and I, I should have probably pointed this out before but we're we're making a class that extends html element uh, yeah. so okay. it's not like we're making something that's like an html element we're actually making, making a new html, HTML element. element yeah so now this in this case and we did we talked about this in some of our previous videos yeah. um i'm in the constructor so this means what you would think it means in any almost any language uh this is i can say this dot element dot style yep dot background color and then this dot attributes is going to let me get to the attributes of my element that we're gotcha. actually yeah, yeah. on the page right yep so that's how they get the colors and you could do that as much as you want you could have a bunch of different attributes and do whatever you want Mm -hmm. And then we're going to append our button to ourselves, basically, as a child. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right? So, and and then there's this little piece of logic that does the, um, when you click on it, it's going to start or stop the timer. And I won't go into the, into the math of this, but it's kind of taking into account that you might have stopped and stopped during it a bunch of times and that the interval might not be exact. And it's just remembering how much time. Um, to show okay and then um, here's the format time function which is again not specific to this topic so whatever it just makes it look like a time yep. with our seconds and minutes and then down at the bottom is the magic right this yeah. is what's saying okay you've got this class it's it's derived from HTML element no yep. so let's define that as a custom element Okay. And that's where that stop dash watch comes from. And I believe you do the same thing. You put a dash in the name. Yep. So that is, that's kind of a convention, right? That I think. I think it is to in use. general yeah. a convention. Yeah. The other way you could do it is with, um, that's not called camel case, but it's called, there's another where you um, a, a capitalize where the words are. In right. Spring of that's got to be the think think the same I, idea, but you'd put instead of capitalizing, you dash, right? Right. And I think that the, the deal, if I remember correctly, is that the browser people or the standards yeah. have said that they will never put a dash in an actual HTML element. 
Oh, so I if you put a dash in yeah. yours, then, then it's well, clearly custom. Your element might conflict with my element in the future. Like if right, we both right. ended up making a stopwatch, but the standards committee is never going to make a stop dash watch. If they, you know, what if I decided to call it div or something, right? It would, and then a div came along and it messed everything up so that's right so this is where having some governance or some namespacing around components that you create is probably a good idea if you're going to adopt this but yeah Can exactly you, good point do as i say not as i do don't call it <laughs> stop dash watch call it your project dash something yeah. you know did you show where custom elements uh was defined custom elements is um is built into the browser right but is it when you're you're importing Nope. It just knows that, oh, it's on the window object. It's on the window object. Got it. Okay. Yep. So it's built nice. into the browser and you can do that at any time. Very cool. This is sort of going deeper to sort of explain how we're containerizing and encapsulating whatever is inside of our custom component so that we can be isolated from the rest of the page and what's going on in the rest of the page and specifically addressing that CSS styling issue that we had. I mean, exactly. I think let's dive in. Show me. Well, yeah, Show me the way. The first Show thing I want to say <laughs> is that the shadow DOM that's here that we're going to look at is different from the one in React. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. So I yeah. got confused initially because I thought, I know what the Shadow DOM is. And I was like, no, you don't. <laughs> it, was, it was the React Shadow DOM. Right. Their own version of it. Thus proving that there are not enough metaphors in, in English language and we have to reuse them and then everybody gets confused. I could make a comment about big companies reusing English words, but I won't. So let's just okay. go to a yeah, demo. I can't imagine what you're talking about. Or using the same <laughs> name for two or three things is always always fun. That too. So let's take a look at the code. There we are. And the HTML hasn't changed. It's the same thing. So if you missed the previous episode, you might want to go watch it. But we've made a, um, a custom web component called stopwatch. <laughs> and last time, the, the style of the stopwatch overwrote the style on the page. So there's a, right. but, a plain old ordinary button at the top. And now we fixed that. So the, the button at the top, you know, okay, it might be a little ugly. I am not an artist, <laughs> but it looks like I intended it to look, which is right. kind of ugly. And these still work independently and pick up the, uh, the color off of the, off the attribute. Awesome. So the problem before was that we, if you recall, we had our regular style sheet, which has the yellow and black button right. that was called in by the page. And then here in the stopwatch subfolder we have the styles that are used by the stopwatch sure and then the code imports that and last time we were uh, um, attaching that uh, as the adopted style sheet of the document object right right so the only difference here in the code is these lines here we're going to create a shadow dom and attach it to this object so this again is our component, which is extending an HTML element. So it is an HTML element. Yep. But instead of attaching the styles to the document object, we're going to uh, make a shadow DOM attached to this element. Mm -hmm. And we'll call that shadow root. We'll remember that. And then we will apply the adopted style sheet to the shadow root. Right. Okay. And that's it. Well, there's no other change. It's just the, those lines of code are enough to tell the browser everything underneath of this shadow root element mm -hmm. is to be isolated. Okay, cool. From a CSS point of view, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, I wonder if, uh, if the SharePoint framework had had this and if... Um, just a speculation, but imagine that the sequence had happened differently. Okay. And that Internet Explorer had been put out to pasture before the SharePoint framework. Do you think we would still have the CSS modules mm. that are used in the SharePoint framework where it puts a funny uh, GUID on the end of all the yeah, names? Yeah, certainly have? wouldn't need it in that case. I mean, it's, it's actually an excellent use case. Um, 
to say that any web part that's being built or any component that extends the page in SharePoint or, well, Teams, it's iframe, so it's a little different, but let, mm. let's just go with that theory, right? Um, it, but if you're trying to play nice on the SharePoint page, that your solution would be a web component is really interesting because you're right. All of your CSS would then be isolated mm. to the to the component that you've built. Um, interesting, really yeah. interesting. I, I am mean, almost could, not we, sure how to think about that. I could almost. I mean, now that you're talking, it's making me think. Well, would SharePoint Framework have even been designed the way that it? Well, I guess it. It is very open, though. You don't have to use React. No, you don't write, have to use I always that. write mine and you build a React component. And I was thinking, what if 100%. I built a web component? And I've but done it. I've done it. You can use it works. The no framework. That works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can do no framework and you can uh, build a web component in share, using the SharePoint framework at that 100% works. Um, but what I guess we're sort of discussing is what if the SharePoint framework itself made you a their base class made you a web component. Yeah, that or even I guess with the technique that you use, where you just say no framework and you make a web component and right. But then I'm there. controlling. You could it. you could yeah. you could use this shadow DOM thing to prevent collisions on the page. Oh, I 100 percent could and 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 have done it and it works and great and okay and yeah and it's something I'm I'm leaning towards in a direction of, but at the same time, like the share that the engineering team could have taken that on and isolated you by default and done right? it sort of automatically yeah, yeah and you wouldn't yeah. have even known you were being isolated so it's big other than if you are don't define all your css mm -hmm. styles you're not going to look the same as the page so there's there's an aspect of that but yeah okay so well it's yeah. good to know that this is use usable right now uh, you Absolutely have to do, is. If yeah. you do what this sample does pretty much in the code. but Exactly. Or you can use um, the, the framework that I've uh, played around with a little bit. That's sort of like helper classes and helper functions mm -hmm. called LIT, L -I -T, that oh. um, help you build web components and gives you some state and other things like that that you're mm -hmm. maybe used to using because of using like a framework like React. That um, That is a really interesting uh, framework that you can take a look at. So I'd love to know if any of our viewers, you know, use the SharePoint framework. Do you think this might be useful? Yeah. Um, would you like to see maybe some of Julie's um, examples where she's actually applying this inside of SharePoint in particular? That might be interesting. So yeah, love to hear from people in the comments. Well, did you like this episode? We hope you did. Please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so you can be notified of any new episodes that are released. And I hope to see you at the next one. Thanks. Thanks.